Hey guys, welcome to my Deep Rock Galactic class tier list. Now, I've been playing the game for quite some time, managed to play with every class, and I'm going to give you a bit of an indication about the best classes to do high-level hazards with. I'm talking like hazard 4, hazard 5. Um, and we're just going to go in the order that I've got them in the tier list, so there will be no specific order. I've got them on down below. They're icons um, are kind of just in, any, in a random order. Um, so we're going to start off between S and D. S means these are like the best classes in the game. Um, if you want to tackle a high level hazard and you want to complete hazard five, you should be looking to use these classes. A is like, you can definitely do hazard four. Hazard five is definitely possible. B is, you'll feel struggle at sort of the higher uh, hazards, but it's not impossible. Um, if you get good rolls and you get, get a bit of good luck, like these classes will definitely do well. Classes C are kind of like not unlikely to clear hazard five without a really good setup. And classes in D are in that category of probably just some of the worst classes in the game. Probably not that viable for high-level hazards. So that's kind of how we're categorizing it. We'll start off with the first one that I have available, which is Juggernaut. So, uh, Juggernaut is an interesting one because it's actually a pretty good class, in my opinion. Uh, it is the... You get 10 armor, you get 50, 50 max HP. You reduce the range of all of your weapons by 50%, but grants 10 plus damage to all weapons for 10 seconds after you take damage. And this can stack up to five times. So you get 50% extra damage if you take damage five times, with each stack then refreshing the duration. Um, you start off with the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, which is an okay weapon, pretty decent. Um, not Definitely not an S tier weapon, but a good weapon nonetheless. And you, um, you kind of have access to the normal gunner weapon pool which will be things like, you know, uh, heavy auto cannon, um, maybe warthog, etc. The the class naturally is super tanky. You will notice even at higher hazards that you can take a lot more damage than most of the other classes can because it's built into your into your uh, kit to take the damage. Now, unfortunately, this is a class that kind of requires you to have some points in health regen and also getting the blt ration pack really helps out because you really are, have to kind of have a way outside of red sugar to kind of regen otherwise you will find that um you might struggle towards the later end of the waves where you're, you're sort of finding a difficult way to clear through the path but because you have access to some of the best weapons in the game like the heavy auto cannon which is absolutely insane you can probably end up clearing um relatively high hazards pretty easily with the juggernaut so in my eyes, a pretty strong class. Let's now take a look at the Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter, in my opinion, is probably the best class in the game. Um, the Scout is very squishy, obviously, but the Scout has a lot of late game potential due to the fact that it has a 200% critical strike modifier. The Sharpshooter grants you 50%, 15% base critical strike chance, 50% base crit critical strike damage on top of what or you, what you already have outside of um, in your sort of out of game upgrades. And in addition, a shrapnel explosion occurs when the sharpshooter deals overkill damage and you begin with the M100 classic and you have access to the scout's default weapon pool. You begin with one of the best weapons in the game uh, in terms of sort of dealing high amounts of damage. Uh, and the fact that you get overkill damage when you have such a high critical strike modifier on this class means that you will start blowing up big swarms really easily. It's one of the best classes in the game for clearing high-level hazards because it simply deals with large volumes of swarms very easily. So it's just a really, really great um, uh, weapon for that reason. Uh, sorry, that class for that reason. It's, it's just one of the best in the game. It has an inbuilt way of dealing AoE damage when you don't need to take kind of AoE weapons. So really fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, now moving on to the Demolitionist. Demolitionist is an interesting one. Um, essentially, it gives you 20% explosion ranges and 20% reload speed on all explosive weapons. Um, you, do, you begin with the Deep Core PGL, which is an okay weapon, and you have access to all explosive weapons. The problem is that whilst that kind of pool of weapons is going to be great in the earlier stages of the game, you're going to find when you get towards especially clearing the juggernaut you you're basically never going to be able to it's it's a very difficult class to clear the juggernaut with because ultimately your entire build revolves around doing dealing aoe damage and the single target damage is very lackluster plus the fact that the aiming of these weapons is often a little bit meh there is an explosion timer on a lot of the weapons as well so you throw the weapon and it has a bit of a delay which sometimes means you'll miss major damage on sort of key single target uh enemies it doesn't 
really feel great to play at the later stages you'll find that you'll get a lot of success you, you'll probably level up loads and get loads of experience and it's not to say that you can't clear high hazards with it but it's just you're a bit of a disadvantage when doing so i think i'm going to put it in c because it's it's definitely like there are definitely builds that can work for it but it is ultimately going to struggle when it comes to single target damage and that is what lets most builds down uh, and that's one of what sort of one of the biggest, I guess, bottlenecks for a lot of builds. Like many builds can get to the fifth level and take on the Juggernaut. Not every build is going to be able to kill the Juggernaut before you get completely overwhelmed. I will say that because you're running the explosives and you're kind of running on stuff that's dealing with very large volumes of enemies, if you scale your damage high enough, then there is always the potential to withstand a huge kind of... I guess withstand a huge uh, increase in the difficulty level as you're taking on the final uh, Dreadnought. You know, I, I think one of the things that um, catches off most builds is that even if you can avoid the Dreadnought for so long, eventually the level scale up so high that you have way too many bugs on the screen and you just can't escape anywhere. I guess in theory, and I have done this a few times, but never actually beaten the Juggernaut with this class, but in theory, if you have a really good run, you could scale the damage so high that even if there are that many bugs on the screen, you will eventually just be able to clear them and clear them and clear them and, and maybe even get enough level ups to eventually deal damage necessary to the Juggernaut to beat it. But yeah, ultimately not a build that uh, I've had a huge amount of success with at the higher hazard levels. Okay, the Interrogator. What to say about this class? It's the worst in the game. I, I think the Interrogator is the worst class in the game because... And you get a flat 30% damage nerf. So just for those who don't know what it is, you get 100% to status effect damage, but you get a 30% damage nerf. You start with a flamethrower, which is a pretty terrible weapon, um, and you get access to all unlocked fire and acid weapons. Now, the sludge is pretty good at clearing swarms, as is the flamethrower to an extent, but sludge, sludge in my opinion, is like goated at clearing swarms because um, acid damage is fantastic. However... Status damage is never going to be a thing, especially for single target. Status damage is, is 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 difficult to make work. If you have like an absolutely godly run where you're just getting consistent status damage upgrades, um, then maybe there's a chance that you sort of can clear the uh, the the juggernaut at the end. But I just this class just feels really weak, um, and not to mention the fact that most beam weapons, especially things like the sludge, sludge and the flame um, flow, require you to have position to get the majority of the damage down. You, it's not like it's not like you can do with most of the classes where you just kind of you position in the best possible place for, for your dwarf you you have to position in the best possible place for your weapon which yes okay you can say that about the gunner but the gunner just needs to turn to face his target usually when it's playing the lead mini storm and if you if you're running with these like warthogs for instance it's much easier to just turn and face your target when you're playing with beam weapons you have to rotate around your target and you have to be on the right side of your target, which is why they offer so many beam upgrades, because they know that that just is going to help with your positioning. But if you're taking beam upgrades, you're not taking damage upgrades. Um, and you're just essentially not scaling the single target damage high enough. So yeah, Interrogator just feels like one of the worst classes in the game. One of the most fun classes, don't get me wrong. I love creating situations where we have massive amounts of numbers on the screen on a massive swarm and they all go boom. But they, again, struggles are the same thing that the um, the demolitionist struggles with which is just single target damage is not very good uh, and that's where you go up against the dreadnought you're going to struggle so yeah that's and that, that's, the, that's the difference between the sharpshooter and the demolitionist and the, and the interrogator the sharpshooter has single to high, high single da uh, target damage potential due to the critical stri critical strike modifiers whereas the demolitionist and the, the in, um, interrogator don't really have those kind of scaling options and therefore they're much more focused on dealing with large volumes, volumes of enemy and, and really just can't actually deal with the, the um, Dreadnought at the end of the level very well. Right, what well, actually my favorite class in the game um, is the Recon Scout. So this the Recon Scout is a the second class mod that you open for that you get for the the scout it has a 25 percent dodge chance plus the base dodge chance that you have of the scout which i believe is five percent um you gain 35 percent movement speed and 35 percent reload speed when you dodge and the recon's starting weapon is the zukov right so the scout is really fantastic because it is super mobile 
and in those really sticky situations where you feel like you don't have a pathway out you can just run through a line of enemies and you hope you dodge get the movement speed increase and just run for it um you can also take the artifact that increases your dodge chance when you take damage which basically means if you take damage you're then guaranteed to dodge at least for the majority of the time as you run through the enemies it's just an absolutely fantastic class for that reason also you the zukov even though it's not great in the early game and, and one of the biggest letdowns for the the recon class is that it's actually really garbage in the early game but the Zukov has access to a cold modifier, which, if you overdrive the Zukov, becomes a pinwheel of freezing death. Uh, and it's just a really, really strong late-game weapon for control of swarms, whilst the rest of your weapons actually deal the damage to deal uh, to kill them. So there is a really good late-game scaling potential with the Scout. Plus, any Scout builds generally tend to scale quite well because of the critical strike chance um, damage increase, which is a 200% critical strike chance uh, damage increase compared to the standard 150% for most classes. So it has a really good late game scaling potential and dodge chance is just really fantastic at negating damage in its entirety and obviously a base 30 percent plus if you grab the dodge artifact is absolutely fantastic so that's why i quite like the scout and i just love playing it because you have access to a load of cool builds as well one of the sort of some of the best builds in my opinion that you can get uh in the game can be done with the recon scout okay the maintenance worker um interesting i know I, some people really like this class i think this class is like it's pretty good. It, it's okay. I have never really been a super big fan of the turrets and sort of the turret system in general. I feel like you're a little bit reliant on their position. And of course, you can play around their position quite nicely. But I feel it restricts you a little bit in terms of your, your movements. And if you actually want to... Um, well, I know. Look, let, let me, let me re re rephrase. Turrets are, are really good in the sense that you can just drop them and they'll sit in the middle of a swarm and they'll do their thing and they can't be killed, which is great. Um... And obviously there's some really cool builds that you come up can come up with with a maintenance worker definitely a, a builds that you can get to sort of higher level uh, hazards with but i just it just doesn't feel super fun to play for me and you're spending most of your time you kind of need to scale your mining speed and your movement speed a little bit because you, that you're basically spending most of your time running away um you know i, I think it's pretty decent I, I think it's high b tier maybe a tier it's it's up there for sure um it obviously you kind of you have the benefit of never having to be in the middle of a swarm to deal damage to them and, and depending on what kind of turrets you go for uh if you go for like the flamethrower turret or even just the you know your standard um lmg turret which can be i think electric upgraded to electrical damage you have a lot of ways of just dealing with large volumes of swarms by having your turrets sit in the middle of them but you are a little bit restricted if you go too far away from your turrets uh, and you obviously want to play around big big setups of your turrets to make sure that you're um uh not getting caught out but i think it's a pretty solid class it's like i said if i could have like an a slash b tier it would be the the, the very lowest end of a the, the highest end of b it's one of the better base classes in my opinion for sure i think uh compared to the almost every other base class it's, it's pretty good so we'll leave it at that for the time being all right so we are going to look at another base class now we are going to look oh i didn't actually tell you what the um the maintenance worker does you get 10 percent damage and 10 percent reload speed for all construct weapons which are basically all turrets uh of some sort all right so the gunner's base uh mod is called the weapon specialist uh you begin with a lead, sp lead storm powered minigun which is a pretty good weapon um and after firing 100 shots from any projectiles the weapon specialist will fire eight high damage project projectiles all around him um shots from bosco count as projectiles and will also count towards this effect so essentially you just take a lot of high fire rate uh high reload speed type weapons so you can combine this with the zukov with the burst the burst pistol anything that just higher fires very very high volumes of bullets because then essentially you just keep spamming bullets out over and over again i actually quite like this um and i think it's i wouldn't say it's a tier but i would definitely put it in the high b tier point it's a pretty good class because there aren't many weaknesses to it there isn't many downsides you get access to a good pool of weapons the gunner's weapons are generally the best in terms of um what they can do and you can play some really cool builds with it like i said the zukov can go for the cold damage the lead powered mini storm uh, weapon is really great too um so it's 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 generally got really high um late game potential it's pretty solid all around it, it not particularly inspiring effect those high powered bullets are okay um and especially if you're like surrounded by a loads and loads of bugs in in sort of a swarm situation they can be a bit of a lifesaver but you know it's it's, it's an okay class and it, if you want to play something on, on the um 
on the gunner that doesn't require you taking damage then you know it's one of the one of the nicest classes to play but the gunner generally has really strong classes overall the final class in the gunner that we're going to talk about now is the heavy gunner um, and the heavy gunner in my opinion is also s tier uh, you get minus 10 percent movement speed but that can be pretty easily rectified with a couple of upgrades um, but you get 25% range to heavy weapons and 25% reload speed to heavy weapons. And you also start with the Hun Thunderhead heavy auto cannon, which in my opinion is just the best weapon in the game, like next to the best weapon in the game. Does so much damage, great single target burst, great at actually piercing through uh, swarms as well. And the only downside of it is the reload speed, but you're already starting to counter that with this particular class. So yeah, I, I just think that there's not much more to say about the heavy gunner. The gunner has generally got great classes and is probably one of the better um, uh, classes in the game alongside the scout. Scout and gunner are both incredibly good, but the heavy gunner is just absolutely fantastic and feels really fun to play as well. Like the, the honestly, go and play with the Thunderhead heavy auto cannon. It is awesome to play with. Uh, and yeah, you essentially can just play around heavy weapons, high impact damage, going for reload speed decreases, going for fire rate increases, um, and obviously, you know, just getting a balance as well. Like, some weapons don't need reload speed, some weapons don't need fire rate. Like, for instance, the um, the jury rigs doesn't really need fire rate because it fires pretty quickly anyway, but it needs reload speed and flat damage because it's high damage. The, the Thunderhead benefits from pretty much everything. You know, the reload speed is its biggest drawback, so getting a reload speed will make you make it feel very impactful, but obviously damage, it will scale really well with damage, and obviously fire rate, it will scale, scale really well with too. So just a really, really great class that doesn't have many downsides in terms of what you pick for the weapon, uh, and actually has access to really great, really great weapon pool as well. All right, now we're going to look at the Foreman. The Foreman, okay, here's my honest take about the Foreman. I actually, well, look, I can't put it as low as the Demolitionist. Um, I, I think, like, it has really great survivability in the sense that, for those of you that don't know, the Foreman grants two a 2% 2 mining speed buff each time the drill are mine, stacking up to 25 times. So you can basically get up to a 50% uh, mining speed buff for free. Um, you begin with the Sabata 120, which is a kind of a, a meh weapon. It's great if you're mining because it shoots behind you. So if any, if any of the um, if any of the bugs are following you into a little tunnel that you're making, it will just shoot directly behind you, which is great. Uh, but you know, other than that, there's nothing too special about this class. What this class is good at is completing certain missions, like mine a certain amount of gold, mine two thousand rocks, rock and stone, etc. This class is really good at doing that. And if you're ever going to try and complete one of those challenges, you definitely pick this class. But as with like the the base class on the gunner, as with the base class on the engineer, it is just a standard base class. You know, there's nothing too special about it. It's not offering you anything that's going to suddenly make you excellent at dealing with high hazard levels. Um, there's no increased kill potential. It's got really good mining capabilities, which means you can usually claim most resources on the map on pretty much every dive, which will then obviously give you access to a couple of extra upgrades per run. But as I said, it's apart from the survivability boon that you get from having mining speed as part of your base kit, Eventually, you're going to run out of places to mine, and if you, you're not getting anything in your kit that suddenly makes your damage or your damage scaling better, it's not a, a great class in that sense. So, yeah, it's an okay class. It's, it's the, in my opinion, like one of the lower end of the B tiers. All right, so we are going to look now at the classic, the classic scout. Um, you begin with 10% movement speed and 20 max HP. Your, your starting weapon is the Deep Core GK2, which is okay. Again, like low end of b tier the the problem with this scout you know, look, movement speed is nice 20 percent, 20 20 max hp is okay the um the issue with the scout on with this particular class is that again not really offering you anything fantastic in terms of survivability apart from the movement speed not really offering you anything in fast fantastic in terms of damage scaling apart from the fact that the scout has got a base 200 percent critical strike rating um base critical strike rating increase and the deep core GK2 is kind of a meh weapon. So look, it's it's okay. You you could you could just like you could with um any of the other base classes have a relatively good run at sort of hazard four level, but it's very unlikely and it's subpar compared to the other scout uh subclasses that you have on offer. So yeah, it's okay, not fantastic. Um not much more to say about it. It's a base class. So the and this this is the one that I was really annoyed at, the strong armed. And it's the gives a twenty percent range bonus to all throwable weapons. You begin with the impact axe, which is a really, in my opinion, a really crap weapon, um, and you have access to all throwable weapons. The problem with this class is the kind of similar to 
the uh, demolitionist is that you, you know, you're obviously wanting to go down a grenade pathway here. Uh, you don't get the bonus to the explosion size. You don't get the bonus to the um, uh, the damage. And to be honest with you, the range increase is kind of meh. Throw it like there is. I've seen builds. I've seen throwable builds do well at high hazard levels, but. The chances of doing well with this particular subclass compared to the other subclasses that you have access to. And the driller, the driller in general is one of the worst classes. Um, are just like much lower compared to anything else that you could pick. Like throwable weapons are generally not good. They are definitely not good at dealing with the um at dealing with the dreadnought. And you you know, your throwable weapons in general are supposed to be dealing with swarms. And don't get me wrong. This build will probably deal with swarms. I don't think the 20% range is that big of a deal because realistically, you're never you're never going to be that far from the swarm. You're usually sticking pretty close to the swarm to make sure you're getting the most impact with your weapons. Um, so the range increase is, isn't that big of a deal. But yeah, ult ultimately, you know, not a great class. And uh, yeah, I think in general is it struggles with the same reason that the interrogator and the... Um, uh, and the demolitionists struggle with it's just they don't have the single target damage to kind of cope with the bigger single target challenges at the higher hazard levels and that finally leaves us with the tinkerer um the tinkerer grain gains an extra 10 10 percent xp gain which is on top of the engineer's base increase in xp xp gain which i think is five percent and you start with the warthog auto 220 uh 210 sorry um i so a lot of people don't like this class but i actually really rate the tinkerer um, the Warthog Auto 210 is a good starting weapon. It gives you decent single target damage and it can allow you to clear some of the earlier um, bugs in the game quite easily. You very quickly overdrive a lot of weapons. You can pretty much overdrive most weapons you get access to. Uh, and that can be really powerful depending on the weapons that you have. I have had some really successful high hazard runs with the Tinkerer. A lot of people don't agree with this though. This is a bit of a controversial placement of the Tinkerer. You know, putting it in the same class as the the um, the the recon scout and the juggernaut is a bit controversial. But with the right weapons, you can get some really powerful overclock abilities. And and combining all of these really powerful overclock abilities can be really strong. Like you know, the warthog is a great, I think, a great single target weapon. It's probably not maybe not as strong as the jury rigged shotgun in terms of dealing that burst single target damage, but it is still pretty solid. And then you get access to a lot, <coughs> sorry, a lot of other weapons that have some really strong level 18 overdrive abilities. So I think it's it's a maybe a, an underappreciated class. Also, if you play it correctly in the early game, you can really, really springboard your build. Uh, and as long as you're staying on the first two levels long enough to hit high XP value. So like I usually try and stay to level 25 to 30 on level one and then try and go to level 40 to 50 on level two. It's very possible with the right weapons. Um, you know, you're you're very likely to kind of scale your build up super quickly. So I, you know, I actually rate the Tinkerer much more highly than some other people do. I think it's I think it's a really good class. Um, and I really, really enjoy playing with it. And that would be my rating for the sort of general Deep Rock Galactic Survivor uh classes. I think they are there's two very standout classes, and then I think obviously like Recon Scout and Juggernaut are good. I personally rate Tinkerer, Tinkerer quite highly. In general, though, if you're looking to push high hazards, obviously the Scout and the the, the Gunner are going to be your go-to's, uh, depending on which classes you want to play. Most of them are viable apart from the base classes. Um, and then obviously, like I quite like the Engineer Tinkerer just because I like overclocking weapons. Overclocking weapons just feels good, right? That's kind of like the part of the game. So yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think, your thoughts in the uh, the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about each of the classes. And I'm going to keep posting some more Deep Rock Galactic Survivor content.